to open your Bibles to Psalms 2. I've got an interesting thing to share with you today, tonight, or whenever you're listening. Uh, it's about the new plans exposed by an insider, Dr. Richard Day, which I usually cover this once a year. And I usually just do highlights, but today, or tonight, or whenever you're watching, I wanted to go a little bit more in depth. I actually had two messages, and I felt like I was going to just do this, and I'm going to go until you guys look tired, <laughs> and look bored, <laughs> and distracted, because uh, I can feel that. It's like when people just have had enough. But this is to encourage us that the Bible is true, and we need to know who our enemy is just like the Bible says. And a lot of people in our churches, a lot of times pastors and leaders, have not really shared to me what I think we need to know to live today. Because things are happening so fast, and there's so much chaos, but when you have eyes to see and ears to hear what God says, you can see where things are going. And so I, a lot of this will make sense as I start into it, but I want you to get your pens and papers out if you want if you're at home and you just want to write notes, because this whole document can be found on uh, rense.com. We just did a copy the other day, so we know it's still there, right? No? Pulled it up by the article, not the book. Oh, okay. He pulled it up by the article, so we don't know that. But I've had this for many years, and I, I was too small, and I said, could you enlarge it? So he did enlarge it. But um, I, there are still places on the internet that show this interview and there's actually a place that they used to have where back in the day it's tapes. Remember the tapes? So these are three tapes and it's the, the plans exposed by an insider, Dr. Richard Day in 1969 as transcribed by Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan. And so I'm going to go through this, but first of all, let's look at Psalms 2 because we can see we have an enemy. And it's always the same enemy. It seems like it's always the same enemy. Way back in the Old Testament, it's evil versus good. And just keep it really simple. There's so many names, people want to label it. Well, I like to call it like what the Bible does in Revelations 18, 23, for thy merchants. The merchants were the great men of the earth. And by their sorceries, and that word sorcery there means by their pharmacia, pharmakeia, were they all were all nations deceived. All nations deceived. And we have just been through a three year ordeal, if you want to say, and you have to know that these things are planned. And this was a whistleblower back in the day, and I go back to this document all the time. So I'm hopeful that it helps you as well, because he's telling you what their plans are and this got leaked out. So let's see here. Psalms 2 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth. Who are they? The kings, the rulers, the presidents, whatever you want to call them. The kings of the earth. In Revelations it says the merchants of the earth. And the rulers take counsel together. They're all coming together. And what are they doing? They take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, this is what they said, let us break their bands asunder and let's cast away their cords from us. So you can see here that this is the, let's just call it the beast system, the world system. Uh, the Bible talks about these things happening and we didn't think it was going to happen in our day, <laughs> but here we go. So I'm just going to go through this quickly until I feel like I've lost you. I, I, I don't have the whole thing here in front of me because it's just too long. And I went through it all and I just highlighted things that you're either going to see have already happened. This was in 1969. And there's some things that are happening right now about the trains. I thought that was very interesting. And also the things that are going to happen in the future. They have not progressed as fast as they wanted to, which is a good thing. Because back then, none of us probably were even aware of all these things that were going on, but plus the Lord's timing. So Psalms 2, Revelations 18, 23, re read that. And I'm just going to kind of go through this. 
talking about the new system, okay? I don't want to get um, flagged by this. So if, if you can subscribe to the Roberta Morrison number two. People are looking at under the TWO. Sorry about that. It's Roberta Morrison two. It's our backup channel that we've got. And let's, let's just get going. So this was a, a lecture that this doctor attended on March 20th, 1969 at a meeting of the Pittsburgh Pediatric Society. And the lecturer was Dr. Richard Day. He died in 1989, but at the time he was a professor of the pediatrics at Mount Sinai Medical School in New York. He had served as a medical director of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. He describes Dr. Day as an insider of the order. And although Dr. Dunnigan's memory was somewhat dimmed, uh, he did remember some details. They were asked not to take any notes. They weren't allowed to take any notes back in the day, but because these are doctors, they're very smart people. He recalls things, and he eventually made three tapes. And he explains what was going on in this lecture. So he was trying to tell these doctors the real purpose behind the trends of our time. Now the contents of these three tapes, I'm just going to go through uh, the contents really quick. Is there a power, a force, or a group of men organizing and redirecting change? Well, according to the Bible, there is. And who are they? They're against the Lord, and they're against his anointed. Everything is in place, and nobody can stop us now. This is what they feel. People will have to get used to change. The real and the stated goals, and we're going to go through some of these, population control, permission to have babies, redirecting the purpose of sex, contraception universally available to all. Now remember, this was in 69. A lot of these things were not discussed or talked about. Uh, sex education as a tool of world government, technology, Families to diminish in importance. Euthanasia and the demise pill. Limiting access to affordable medical. Planning the control over medicine. The elimination of private doctors. New difficult to diagnose and untreatable diseases. Suppressing cancer cures as a mean of population control. This is the part that I've talked about a lot here in our groups. Blending all religions. They said back then even, the old religions will have to go. Changing the Bible through revisions of key words. This was the shocker. The churches will help us. Restructuring education as a tool of indoctrination. More time in schools, but they won't learn anything. Controlling who has access to information. Schools as the hub of the community. Books would just disappear from libraries. Changing laws. The encouragement of drug abuse to create a jungle atmosphere. Alcohol abuse. Planned. Restrictions on travel. All I have to say is we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, crime used to manage society. Who would even think that they would use evil to get their changes in place? Uh, curtailment of American industrial preeminence. Shifting populations and economies, tearing the social roots. So we see this, don't we now? Shifting the populations. Uh, sports is a tool of social change, and he talks about they don't want women to be women, they want women to do sports, and at some point he said the women are going to have their scores in the newspapers just like the boys. Well, we see that. Sex and violence through entertainment, travel restrictions and implanted IDs, food control, weather control. Know how people respond, making them do what you want. Interesting, this next one. Falsified scientific research. 
couple more and then we'll start into it. Terrorism, financial control, surveillance, implants and televisions that watch you. Home ownership, a thing of the past. The arrival of the totalitarian global system. And the first one, and we're going to just kind of go through this, and I'm, I'm going to skip a lot. So if you want to find it on the internet, go ahead, copy it, print it out while you still can. Uh, is there a power, a force, or a group of men organizing and redirecting change? Now, now he said 20 years ago, but now I'll say over 50 years ago, the speaker did not speak in terms of retrospect, but rather predicting changes that would be brought about in the future. Again, is there someone making these changes? Is there a group of people? According to the Bible, there is. The speaker was not looking from the outside in. He was on the inside, admitting that indeed there was an organized power force group of men who wielded enough influence to determine major events involving countries around the world. He predicted or expounded on changes that were planned for the remainder of this century. And again, they didn't get everything done that they wanted, but we'll see that if somebody's following some kind of a plan here. So if you think back in 1969, recall the kinds of changes which have occurred between then and now almost, he said, 20 years, but now we can say it's been 50 years. I believe you will be impressed with the degree to which things that were planned to be brought have already been accomplished. Some have not. The speaker said his purpose in having this meeting was to tell us about changes that would be brought about in the next 30 years or so. And as he put it, we plan to enter the 21st century with a running start. Everything is in place and no one can stop us now. At that time, he, now listen to this one, because I've thought about this many times as I read the news and going on with a lot of the things that are going on. At that time, he indicated there's much more cooperation between the East and West than most people realize. Always have to have an enemy, you know. But he was free to speak at this time because now, and I'm quoting here, everything is in place and no one can stop us now. And this speaker was Dr. Richard Day, a doctor of medicine and a former professor at a large Eastern university. And he was addressing a group of doctors of medicine, about 80 of them. And he said, there would be changes that would be very surprising and in some ways difficult for people to accept. And he hoped that we, as sort of his friends, would make the adaptations more easily if we knew beforehand what was coming and what to expect. And this is one of the things that I've thought of, too. He said, people will have to get used to change. Nothing will stay the same. He insisted that no one have a tape recorder and that nobody take notes. And his remarks suggested that there could be some negative rep repercussions against him if it become widely known that indeed he had spilled the beans, so to speak. He asked that no notes be taken, no recording be used. This was suggesting there might be some personal danger to himself if these revelations were widely publicized. As the remarks began to unfold and heard the rather outrageous things that were said, I made it a point to try to remember as much of what he said as I could and to connect my recollections to simple events around me to aid my memory for the future in case I wanted to do what I'm doing now, which is recording this. People will have to get used to the idea of change. So used to change that they'll be expecting change. Nothing will be permanent. So change was to be brought about. Change was to be anticipated, expected, and accepted. No questions asked. Another comment during this presentation was, and listen to this, and this is what we say all the time, people are too trusting. People don't ask the right questions. Sometimes being too trusting was equated with being too dumb. He would say, people don't ask the right questions. It's almost with a sense of regret as he were uneasy with what he was a part of and wish that people would challenge it and maybe not be so trusting. Isn't that what we see today? People just, they don't think, they just, like sheep, they just follow. 
And this one I've thought about a lot too, the real and the stated goals. He said everything has two purposes. And this has to do with changing laws. Everything has two purposes. One, basically, they lie to you to tell you, so you'll accept it. That's not what he said. One is the purpose to which will make it acceptable to people. And the second is the real purpose, which would further the goals of establishing the new system. Now, we know the new system is, according to the Bible, the beast, the beast system. First one is population control. He said the population is growing too fast. Numbers of people living at one time on the planet must be limited or we will run out of space to live. We will outgrow our food supply and will pollute the world with our waste. Then the next one, and I'm not gonna go into this one, but permission to have babies. We know that's happened in some countries and I've had heard a rumor that that was what was discussed at the World Economic Forum. Uh, redirecting the purpose of sex. He said sex must be separated from reproduction. The strategy is to increase the activity, but in such a way that people won't be having babies. Contraception, universally available to all. Now think about 1969, this was not something that people talked about. He said this contraception would be made universally available. Contraceptives would be displayed more prominently in drug stores. He said right up with the cigarettes and chewing gum. I don't know if they have cigarettes right up front anymore. I don't know. Nah, never smoked, so thank the Lord for that. Contraceptives would be advertised and also dispensed in the schools in association with sex education. Sex education will be used as a tool in the new system. And this guy said he didn't believe it back then, but he said, boy, was I wrong. It's happening. Many cities in the United States have already set up school-based clinics, which are primarily contraceptive birth control population control clinics. Our poor children, our, ch our, our grandchildren. The idea then is that the connection between sex and contraception introduced and reinforced in school would carry over into marriage. Marriage itself would be diminished in importance. Do you think we're seeing that? He indicated some recognition that most people would want to be married, but this certainly would not be any longer considered necessary for sexual activity. Anything goes. And of course, he talks about encouraging different things I want to talk about right now. But uh, we see the gender bending things going on. That's all I'll say. Technology. And I've talked about this. He indicated much research was underway about making babies in the laboratory, which we know they've been doing. Families to diminish in importance. And many of you have written to me, told me your, your children no longer want to see you. This is part of their division. They want to cause this. A lot of people are going to these counselors and they'll blame it on the parents. It's your fault. It's your Christian upbringing. Just cut them off. This is what they're getting. If you're sending them there, be careful. Euthanasia and the demise pill. This one I've heard about and I had a nurse friend and she said it's art, it was already happening way back then when I taught on this, what, 19, 2011 maybe. Anyway, way back there. And this is what they believe. This is the people that want to control the world, want to bring about their changes, want to bring about their laws, and, and I always think, uh, don't they get old too? I mean, why would they want to destroy the old people? They're also going to be old, but this is a, everybody has a right to live only so long. The old are no longer useful. They become a burden. You have a right to only so many steak dinners. I'm not going to quote all the things. So many pleasures in life. After you've had enough of them, you're no longer productive working and contributing. Then you should be ready to step aside for the next generation and they want you to take this demise pill. And if that isn't playing God, I don't know what is, right? Then he talks about the medical. A big item that was elaborated was the cost of medical care would be made burdensomely high. And the idea was that if everybody says, enough, what a burden it is on the young to try to maintain the old people, then the young would become agreeable listen to this, to help mom and dad along the way 
provided this was done humanely and with dignity. Then the example was there could be a nice farewell party, a real celebration. Mom and dad had done a great job. Then after the party's over, they take the demise pill. We were in Rochester, and I was at the hotel waiting, and I turned on the television there, and they were having a demise party for this man. I saw it on television for myself. And he laid down in the coffin, he took the thing and did it, and they all rejoiced and they celebrated him, and this is happening. And I could not believe it, and it was just like, wow. Uh, planning the control over medicine. The next topic was medicine. There would be profound changes in the practice of medicine. Medicine would be much more tightly controlled. Elimination of private doctors. The image of the doctor, and this is why he met with these 80 doctors, that he wanted them to prepare for the change that was coming for doctors. He said they, w they made too much money. And he said the image of the doctor would change. No longer would he be seen as an individual professional in service to individual patients. So keep in mind this was an audience of doctors being addressed by a doctor. And it was interesting that he would make some rather insulting statements to his audience without fear of antagonizing us. The solo practitioner, he said, would become a thing of the past. A few diehards might try to hang out, but most doctors would be employed by an institution of one kind or another. Group practice would be encouraged Corporations would be encouraged, and then once the corporate image of medical care gradually became more and more acceptable, doctors would more and more become employees rather than independent contractors. A few diehard doctors may try to make a go of it, remaining in solo practice, remaining independent, but they would suffer a great loss of income. They'd be able to scrape by maybe, but never really live comfortably as would those who were willing to become employees of the system. Ultimately, there'd be no room for all the solo practitioners after the system is entrenched. This was the next one he talked about. You guys okay? Mm -hmm. New, difficult to diagnose, and untreatable diseases. He said there would be new diseases to appear which had never been seen before, which would be very difficult to di diagnose, and they were untreatable. His own opinion. He said, I think AIDS was at least one example of what he was talking about. I now think AIDS, this was him speaking, was probably a manufactured disease. Now this was the part for the church. Blending all religions. Another area was the discussion of religion. Now remember, this is an atheist speaking, or you could say a humanist. A humanist, I think. He said religion is not necessarily bad. A lot of people seem to need religion, but it's with its mysteries and its rituals, so they will have religion. But the majority or the major religions of today have to be changed because they're not comparable with the changes to come with their new system. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity. Once the Roman Catholic Church is brought down, the rest of Christianity will follow easily. Then a new religion can be accepted for us. A new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. The one world religion. It will be incorporated something from all the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept and feel at home. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They'll realize they don't need it. I'd say he's wrong on that. <laughs> In order to do this, a Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with new words having various shades of meaning. Then the meaning attached to the new word can be close to the old word. And as time goes on, they're very slow in their process of changing things. They're not in a rush. And as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized. And then gradually that word replaced with another word. But the idea is that everything in scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words. 
the variability in meaning attached to any word can be used as a tool to change the entire meaning of scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this new religion, which we've been warning about the changing of the Bibles and how they're doing it. Most people won't know the difference as this was another one of the times he said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. The churches will help us. Then followed one of the most surprising statements of the whole presentation. He said, some of you probably think the churches won't stand for this. And he went on to say, the churches will help us. And they have, haven't they? Reconstructing or restructing education as a tool of, and again, there's more on each topic if you want to get it off the internet yourself. I just can't go through all of them. He's talking about education. And remembering what he said about religion was in addition to changing the Bible, he said the classics and literature would be changed. I seem to recall him talking about Mark Twain, giving as an example. He said that the casual reader reading a revised version of a classic would never even suspect there was any change. I think they call it the Mandela effect, don't they? That there was a change. Some people have noticed changes. Someone would have to go through word by word to even recognize that any change was made in these classics. The changes would be so subtle but the changes would be such as to promote the acceptability of the new system. More time in school, but they won't learn anything. Better schools, you'll learn more. This one I've known, some people that I know constantly have to go back to get recertified, to get, it's always like they're going through school. He said, most people, it's gonna take longer to complete their education, to get what originally had been in a bachelor's program would now require advanced degrees and more schooling. Advanced degrees and more schooling. My daughter-in-law is going through this. You constantly add on more things you have to do. You have to do. Education would be lifelong and adults would be going to school. There'll always be new information that adults must have to keep up. When you can't keep up anymore, you're too old. This was another way of letting older people know that the time had come for them to move on and take the demise pill. <laughs> if you got too tired to keep up with your education, you got too old to learn new information, this was a signal you begin to prepare to get ready to step aside. And this one I've experienced and I warned people years ago, get the books you want in print, get them now, because uh, he said some books will just disappear from the library. Uh, they're going to revise the Bible, but he said some books would just appear, disappear. This was in the vein that some books contain information or contain ideas that should not be kept around. Therefore, these books will disappear. Now, in Daniel 7.25, it talks about the changing of the laws and about this whole system. It's, uh, speak great words against the Most High shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and seasons or times and laws. And I think about that, how people say there's not really a spring. There's not, doesn't seem to be a fall. It seems to be hot or cold. There's just strange things are happening. We'll get into that in a minute. Another area of discussion was that laws would be changed Gambling would increase. Now, they didn't used to gamble. Remember back in the 69? How did he know that? How did he have the information that he has? Because he was an insider. Governments would get into gambling. Bankruptcy laws would be changed. Uh, now, I thought this was kind of interesting. I'm not sure we'll get to all of them. But the encouragement of drug abuse to create a jungle atmosphere. Drug use would be increased. Alcohol use would be increased. Law enforcement efforts against drugs would be increased increased. On first hearing, it sounded like a contradiction. Why increase drug abuse and simultaneously increase law enforcement against drug abuse? But the idea is that in part, the increased availability of drugs would provide a sort of law of the jungle whereby the weak and the unfit would be selected out. There was a statement made at the time, before the earth was overpopulated, there was a law of the jungle. The brave new world is what they want where only the fittest survives. The abuse of drugs would restore in a certain sense, this just sees how their minds are, the law of the jungle and selection of the fittest for survival. 
The same would appear with alcohol. Alcohol abuse would be both promoted and demoted at the same time. The vulnerable and the weak would respond to the promotions and therefore use and abuse more alcohol. Another good way to get rid of them. Uh, then he talks about psychological services would be made available to help those who get hooked on drugs and alcohol. And then he said this is to screen out the unfit. And if they're really worth their salt, they would have enough sense to seek psychological counseling and benefit from it. So this was presented as sort of a redeeming value on the part of the planners. It was as if he was saying, you think you're, we're bad in promoting these evil things, but look how nice we are. We're also providing a way out. Restrictions on travel. Not everybody should be free to travel the way they do in the United States. This was the end of tape one. Uh, we're not going to get too much farther, but no more security. Nothing will be permitted or permanent. Streets would be rerouted and renamed. Have you noticed rerouting and renaming, rerouting and renaming? Uh, he, meant, he mentioned that buildings and bridges would be made so that they would collapse after a while. There would be more accidents, listen to this, involving airplanes and railroads and automobiles. All of this to contribute to the feeling of insecurity and that nothing was safe. It's just like the devil. He doesn't want peace. He, he wants chaos. God wants us to live in peace. He doesn't want us to live in peace. God wants us not to worry. They use fear as their weapon. Totally good versus evil. Crime is going to be used to manage society. Boy, didn't we see that a few years ago. Planned chaos. There would be created slums, created slums, and other areas well-maintained. I'm not going to go through this. He said, but one of the things, and I've thought about this over and over again, he said, things would be made to fall apart. <laughs> things would be made so they would break and fall apart. That is, in the United States, so the people would tend to prefer different, different, he's, he's basically saying the United States is going to come down and other countries are going to come up. Travel restrictions and implanted ID. It was already planned that later on some sort of device would be developed to be implanted under the skin that would be coded specifically to identify the individual. This would eliminate the possibility of false IDs. Now remember, there's a purpose for everything, what they tell you that's acceptable and then their real purpose. He said this would eliminate the possibility of false IDs and el eliminate the possibility of peop people saying, well, I lost my ID. The difficulty about these skin implants was that it stated to be getting material that would stay in under the skin without causing for foreign body reactions. They decided on silicone. <laughs> it was seen at that time as a promising material to be retained in the body without rejection and to be able to retain information retrievable by electronic means. Now, some things I think we're going through right now, food control. Listen to what he says. Food supplies would come under tight control. If population growth didn't slow down, food shortages could be created in a hurry. And people would realize the dangers of overpopulation. Created food control. Now, this is, has not happened yet. I have read this in the agenda 2030, 2050s, and it's not happening right now, but I believe it's in the future. One of the purposes that they want to talk about is growing your own vegetables. They're going to say it's unsafe and it spreads diseases or something like that. So the acceptable idea was to protect it's for your safety the consumer, but the real idea was to limit the food supply and growing your own food would be illegal. This is what they want. Will they get it? I don't know. A lot of people have their own gardens. Uh, weather control, and I wanted to say something about this because if you've never listened to Above Ground World News, Mike Morales, he's fighting stage four cancer right now, but he, he's a truth teller of what's going on. Uh, this was another striking straight statement. This is what he said. We can 
or soon we'll be able to control the weather. I'm not merely referring to dropping iodide crystals into the clouds to precipitate rain, that's already there, but real control. And weather was seen as a weapon of war, a weapon of influence, influencing public policy. Can't even say the words. It could make rain or withhold rain in order to influence certain areas and bring them under your control. On the one hand, you can make drought during the growing season so that nothing will grow. And on the other hand, you can make very heavy rains during harvest season so that the fields are too muddy to bring in the harvest. And indeed, one might, one might be able to do both. Think of the evilness of these people. And it's all about control. Controlling. Even AI, it's to be like God. Trying to be everywhere at all times. Uh, falsified scientific research. I'm not going to go through all of this, but we already know that they can they can do whatever they want. This poll, okay, we're going to send this survey in, or we're going to have this investigation by the same people that own the companies. Uh, yeah. Um, the, one of the last ones I'm going to get into here is well, they talked about terrorism. It, that it would be used mostly in Europe and other parts of the world, but if the United States didn't move along into the system, it would be added. Uh, financial control. There was discussion of money and banking. This is another reason why I wanted to bring this up now. Inflation is infinite. You can put an infinite number of zeros after any number and put the decimal points wherever you want as an indication that inflation is a tool of the controllers. Surveillance, implants, television that watch you. I think we already know that. Uh, surveillance, talks a lot about it, surveillance. He said, you'll be watching television and somebody will be watching you at the same time at a central monitoring station. We already know that. Television sets would have a device to enable this. The TV set would not have to be on in order for this to be operative. The television sets used to monitor what you're watching, how you're reacting to what you're watching. Talks about how one day you're going to be able to buy things from your TV. <laughs> what is that? Q -V -Q -R QVC. QVC. Yeah, you just, you know, he you said you can, you're going to be able to buy purchases from your television. You know, he knows. You don't believe it now, but it's going to happen. Well, we've seen it happen. In the last page I have... The cost of housing, they want eventually home ownership to be a thing of the past. This is really big in their agendas, moving towards the 30s and the 50s. Will they get it? I don't know. The cost of housing and financing housing would gradually be made so high that most people couldn't afford it. People who already own their houses would be allowed to keep them, but as years go by, it would be more and more difficult for young people to buy a house. Young people would more and more become renters. And he talks all about how renting would be the new thing. People would not be able to buy these, and gradually more and more the population would be forced into small apartments. And then he said, um, eventually they can take homes away, and guess how? Increasing the taxes. And we have been seeing a lot of increased of the taxes. And I just want to quote that Verse again, look at that, Psalms 2 again. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth, or the merchants of the earth, they're there. We're seeing them, we're seeing what they're doing, we're seeing what their plans are, but God doesn't want us to be shocked. In some of their books, they even call it future shock. Because from 2020 to 2030 is going to be so many changes, more changes are going to happen in this decade than have ever happened before to anyone, anytime. And God doesn't want us to be shocked. He wants us to be prepared. Uh, do the best you can be prepared. Uh, one of the things I just kind of want to mention is get your own distiller. If you have a, you know, water at some point in time we're seeing is getting just crazy, get your own distiller. We personally use WaterWise. We have for years. Um, there's other things out there, but try to prepare the best you can and don't be afraid. Uh, 
They would love to have fear just overtake us and just stress out. And it, I was reading this article about how the demise pill has been operating now for a, a while in Canada. And there was over a thousand some that just t took it because they were lonely. I thought, how sad. They didn't know they were depressed and lonely and just didn't want to live anymore. And this is what the enemy wants. He wants hopelessness. But when you get saved, Jesus is our hope. He's our hope. We have a future. We have joy. I don't know how people make it in these days without the Lord. He is our strength. And the Bible says to rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice every day. We have ups and downs. We have things that are happening, things with the economy right now. But we're supposed to keep our eyes on him, keeps our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus because we know we have an enemy, but we know that Jesus has already defeated the enemy and that we have a heavenly home that we're, what is this life? It's but a vapor that's going to be gone. So make sure your eyes and your heart are set on Christ, amen, amen who died for our sins. So Father, we thank you that this wouldn't dishearten people, but let them know there are merchants of the earth that have plans against the Lord and against his anointed. And you do not want us to be off guard. And there's so many Christians that do not want to see truth. And Lord, I just pray they would repent. You are the truth. And there's times you said things that were hard to take, but it was still the truth. So I pray that we would be lovers of the truth. And we would not be deceived by the new translations, the new things that they're trying to bring in, the laws they're changing and all the different things they're trying to promote to our grandchildren, our kids in school. I just pray for the grandmothers and grandpas and the parents to show their children the right way, Amen. that we stand for truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said? Amen. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, and also her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her. Be sure to check out her YouTube playlist for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org webpage and click on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.